We just finished an epic race in Belgium, a race at a pretty historic track. And the race itself will be remembered with all the other legendary races, like Hamilton last year in Brazil and Vettel in Singapore in 2013. This will always be Max Verstappen at Spa. So settle in, it's a long video, but this will definitely be worth it. Now qualifying was another story, but in qualifying, Verstappen pulled off what Vettel did in Singapore in 2013. He took pole position from his garage. Verstappen set the fastest lap and then he went back into the pit. He got out of the car and with 4 minutes remaining in the session, he was just roaming around in the paddock. No one could match Verstappen's time in those 4 minutes. If anything, that was a sign of what was going to happen at the race on Sunday. So, with all the grid penalties, Verstappen was supposed to start 15th. However, both of the Alpha Tauri cars had to start from the pit lane, and that moved Max up a bit. But there was still quite a lot to do. At the end of the first lap, there was a safety car for Hamilton and Bottas as they suffered from two separate incidents. And the safety car helped Max to claw his way back. But with a new power unit and Max being Max, he made very light work of the other cars. Now there were rumours of Red Bull introducing a new lightweight chassis and reports said that that was the reason behind Verstappen's excellent form and that was also the reason why no one seemed to be able to catch the Red Bulls. However, team boss Christian Horner rubbished those rumours. He said, no, we didn't bring the lightweight chassis and no, we don't have one. So no, it wasn't a factor in the performance. I think a lot was made and a lot of expectation was placed on that technical directive. And arguably, perhaps it's hurt others more than it hurt ourselves. But I think we've seen that already this year, we've run a higher ride height. Our philosophy is probably slightly different to some of the others. Maybe we'll get a technical directive for the next race that says we have to run much lower. What Christian Horner is talking about is the new technical directive. It was introduced by the FIA after the Mercedes team complained about the potential of drivers getting injured due to the extreme poison. So the FIA asked all of the teams to raise their car's height for the weekend at Spa to eliminate the poison. Now throughout the season, Red Bull have been racing with a relatively higher car setup. So their aerodynamic performance was not compromised on this track in particular. Now back to Max Verstappen, he currently sits with 9 wins this season, which is just 4 short of the record of 13 wins in a season. Michael Schumacher and Sebastian Vettel achieved this historic feat only once in their racing career. So it's mental what Verstappen might achieve and the great names who he might join. You have to keep in mind that in Schumacher's 2004 season, there were only 18 races. And in Vettel's 2013 season, there were only 19 races. This season, there are 22 races, but that doesn't take away the fact that Verstappen could break those records this season. Moving on to Ferrari, as the trend has been this season, whenever Red Bull have a flawless performance, you know that Ferrari have messed up. And that might have been the case this weekend too. After all of the other drivers had grid penalties, Sainz started on pole. But the pace of the Red Bull was too much for him and he couldn't hold back Perez. But the drama came at the end of the race. Leclerc was comfortably in 5th position and he had Russell ahead of him and Alonso behind him. The gap between both of these cars was pretty significant and if he continued as he was, he would get 5th place. But the Ferrari team asked him to box for a new set of tyres so he could try and set the fastest lap. Now Leclerc said that he didn't want to do that but the Ferrari team insisted. The team didn't calculate how far behind Alonso was to Leclerc and coming out of the pits, Alonso was in front. Leclerc overtook Alonso in the last lap and he took back the fifth spot. But then the FIA saw that Leclerc was speeding in the pit lane and they gave him a 5 second penalty. This demoted him to 6th place and he didn't even get the fastest lap. Even Alonso made fun of Ferrari and said that they always have some strange strategies. Now speaking of Alonso, he had a brilliant race and the team Alpine in general had a great race. Both of their drivers scored good points. Alonso started third but he had a huge first lap incident with Hamilton. 
This got back so many memories of the two of them just going together at it in the past. But Alonso came out of the incident better than Hamilton. Hamilton suffered so much damage that he was forced to retire. And Alonso went on a rant on his radio. Now, it's important to note that drivers say a ton of things in the heat of the moment. And taking these dialogues and still arguing about them a week later is like beating a dead horse. There's just no point in it. Hamilton took the blame for the incident and Alonso said that it was nice that Hamilton did that. Alonso also said that it was one of those first lap incidents where things just happen. So the incident was pretty much closed. Alonso's brilliant race was made better when he got promoted to P5 after Leclerc's mess up. It was also his teammate who was having a blast out there. Esteban Ocon started in 16th after taking penalties and he managed to recover to an impressive 7th place finish. But what's cooler is that he had a double overtake. Now what exactly is a double overtake? Well this is what it is. He overtook two cars in one go and what's crazy is that he did it twice in the race. But overtakes and radio messages aside, more importantly, what this means for Alpine is that they scored points on a weekend when McLaren scored nothing. The rivalry against McLaren has been enjoyable off late and the Oscar Piastri drama just adds to it. Alpine have a 20-point lead on McLaren and they sit comfortably in the fourth spot of the Constructors' Championship. The Mercedes had a pretty decent day. There were talks about them getting massive upgrades for this race and how the new technical directive would help them unlock the full potential of the car. But throughout the weekend, they looked to be adequate. Hamilton was out early and it meant that it was just Russell for the Mercs. They split the Ferrari cars and Russell almost snatched third position from Sainz, but he couldn't. But this finish means that Russell has finished fifth or higher in every race that he has managed to finish this season. It's a pretty cool start for sure and it's just his first season in Mercedes. It also goes to show you how valuable it is to be consistent in Formula 1. George Russell is now one point away from Carlos Sainz in the World Championship. Pierre Gasly. He started his 100th race in Formula 1, but he almost didn't. Now what I mean is that the Alpha Tauri had problems just before the formation lap and the team managed to get his car started in the pit lane 90 seconds before the actual race started. He put in a great shift and he clawed his way back to 9th place. Sensational stuff. Alex Albon started in 6th, which he was probably used to doing in a Red Bull, but this time he was in a Williams. The Williams was demolishing the straights in Spa. They had the speed and Albon made full use of it. He finished P10, but he had a huge bunch of cars behind him and he defended hard, all for that one point. Sebastian Vettel had a great race too. He finished 8th in the Aston Martin and he scored more valuable points for the team. And to put into perspective just how great a job the world champion is doing at Aston Martin, the team Aston Martin have scored 24 points this season. And Sebastian Vettel, he scored 20 points. It's a shame that Formula 1 won't be having this great racer on the track from next year. So that was a pretty detailed report of the Belgian Grand Prix. If you liked it, do remember to give us a thumbs up, subscribe or even just let us know in the comments. We love to read what you have to say. So thank you for watching this video by Ferment Motorsports and stay tuned as we get you more updates on all things Formula 1.